Georgie Crozier. Thanks for joining us, uh, Georgie. There's so much to talk about. First off, though, this announcement late today, after the Premier's press conference, that the inquiry into the quarantine bungles has been delayed. How long is this going to take? Are the excuses uh, good enough? Shouldn't we be getting to the bottom of this as soon as possible? Well, Chris, good evening. And, and absolutely, the inquiry has been delayed for six weeks till November the 6th. Uh, and this is just uh, another delay for so many Victorians that want answers into relation to how this whole hotel, hotel quarantine bungle occurred. And, of course, what's interesting that came out today was what Justice Pope said. She said, well, this isn't a court and it doesn't preclude uh, people from speaking out publicly, uh, including ministers, in relation to giving some of those answers that Victorians are so desperately wanting. Well, that's the point. Uh, as I've said from the outset, there will be ministers and bureaucrats who know exactly what went on now. In fact, it would absolutely be recklessly, uh, be recklessly abandoning their duties if the health minister and premier didn't know what went wrong now. So shouldn't we just be getting to the nub of this at the moment? And, uh, and, and uh, if the inquiry has to hear it all, just be hearing it over Zoom? There's no need for people to turn up in person? Well, absolutely. There's so many... Um answers that could be given to the very questions that Victorians deserve. We've got so much going on. We've got people in lockdown. I mean, we can't even leave our homes after 8 o'clock at night in, uh, you know, five and a half million of us who are locked down. It's illegal to do so. You've got to get a permit to go to work. There are extraordinary constraints put on Victorians, and we're still wanting to know why on earth we got into this mess. And the government is just absolutely avoiding answering all these questions, as we saw in the parliament yesterday. And it just is incredibly confusing and the anxiety and despair amongst so many Victorians because they're losing their loved ones to COVID and the economic impacts are just massive, losing jobs and livelihoods. It is just atrocious what is going on and the way the government is is handling this situation, Chris. If only the Andrews government was as good at locking down in quarantine as they are at locking down their own population, where <laughs> they might, things might be better off. Now, we showed you yesterday asking Jenny McCarkas some relevant questions in Parliament, which she refused to ask. She said she would give her written answers. Here she is in the press conference today, again, refusing to share the answers with Victorians. I made it very clear that I did not want to be there. I committed yesterday to providing written answers by today and they will all get those written answers today. Now, Georgie Crozier, have you got those written answers yet? No, I haven't, Chris. Before I came on, I checked to see whether they'd uh, come through, but they haven't. And under sessional orders, they should have been supplied by midday. But, um, you know, it's uh, a few hours off from midnight. The, the Minister... Her extraordinary performance in the parliament yesterday just demonstrated the disdain and contempt that uh, and disregard for our institutions, but more importantly to the Victorian people. And again, she brushes it off in that media conference today. It is just appalling. These are just go through the questions for us. These are very straightforward questions, aren't they? About when the government uh, first knew of problems with quarantine, who made the decision to outsource to private contractors. Give us those key questions that you think we need to get answers to right now. Well, it was, I was asking about exactly that. When did you know? Was it March or April? On what date did you know about the issues around hotel quarantine, for instance? That was one question. Uh, the genomic report that the Doherty has, has all that data, giving information about the, the tracing back to the hotel quarantine, the chief health officer and himself said, possibly every single case of the second wave is relating back to the hotel quarantine. So would you release it? Uh, and... You know, in terms of the public health team, uh, issues around that, you cut the budget. Why weren't, why weren't we prepared? What was, why did you cut the budget to the health team so that, we, so that we could do this very, very critical work of contact tracing? That is some of the questions that were asked, but there were others asked around intensive care capacity um, and, and various other issues. But the minister for just to just blanket her refusal was just extraordinary and it was just so infuriating and frustrating to think that she just held our very, very, um, our parliament in the way she did and just treated us with all such contempt, I think just demonstrates and says more about the minister, more about the government than it does about anyone else. And she has um, a lot to answer for in, in how this whole debacle has been handled. And again, she showed her just arrogance and absolute, I, I think, just 
a dreadful um, disdain for the Victorian people. Look, with the uh, infection numbers rising to over 700 on a few days, the deaths in aged care centres rising uh, horribly, obviously the Andrews government needed to do something more. But does it not strike all of us as bizarre, if not alarming, mm. that he has locked down the whole state and imposed a curfew before yesterday, finally saying that people who are infected uh, have a positive coronavirus test should stay home and not leave home to exercise. Well, Chris, this is right. There is just so much confusion. I mean, the Chief Health Officer said it was uh, based on human rights that they're allowed to go out and exercise. But then we're being berated and we're being lectured to by the Premier to say that it's our problem that the virus is spreading. There's no, um, there's no consistency with the government's message and we've had this inconsistency the whole way along. We, Victoria was the first state to have the virus on January the 25th. The minister said we were prepared, but we've seen how unprepared we've been and the inconsistency in messaging, exactly as you described with that uh, situation yesterday. This has been an issue. It's now August and we're in this terrible state of um, just so much devastation and a loss of life and loss of income it's, and social, mental health, social impacts the health impacts, there's just so many consequences for these uh, terrible, the terrible incompetence and mismanagement by the government. Um, and it just is heartbreaking, actually, because so many people are confused and that despair is really real. It is really real. It's been so poorly managed. Is it time for Daniel Andrews to punt the Chief Medical Officer, Brett Sutton, and perhaps recruit one of those Deputy Medical Officers uh, from Canberra who seem to have been much more consistent and sober and thorough throughout? Well, I, I think the uh, Chief Medical Officer uh, and, the, and his deputies have been very clear to the Australian public in their messaging and their messaging to Victorians, which the Chief Health Officer here and the Premier himself did not uh, consistently take their advice. That was the whole problem with uh, lockdown one and the first wave. We were getting inconsistent advice and that was part of the problem. So I think we need somebody to take control because it's overwhelmed the department. Certainly the Minister is out of her depth, but there is just this total... Uh, chaos and confusion going on and it comes out of the department, it comes out of the Minister's office and the Minister needs to be held accountable here and the Premier and, and those people, those gang of eight that have sat around that Cabinet table, Chris, they have a huge amount to answer for to the Victorian public. Georgie Crozier, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks so much, Chris.